Uh, hi, this is Colin Clark. I did a breaking defense in the ill-named Army's Innovator Corner. Uh, but never mind, we still love the Army. So I'm here with Bob Sadowski, who has the very cool title of Chief Army Roboticist. And he's going to tell us how a robot sees what's around it and makes and decides how to get from point A to point B. All right, thank you. So what we have over here is a type of kit that you could put on top of a vehicle, and it has a couple sensors. It has basically a light-ranging radar, otherwise known as a LIDAR, and we also have stereo camera pairs that work in the sort of visual spectrum right there. And that's what we're looking at right that's here. That's what you're looking at right here. There's a computer on the bottom of this, and there's a, there's an ad, there's a sort of inertial uh, sensing system so you can kind of know what your orientation is. So the real key with how uh, robotics sees the world is really how you fuse the data. It turns out that uh, robots don't really know anything. We have to teach them everything. And so we use a variety of techniques. The cameras are great for giving you visual information, but they're not very good for giving you 3D depth. It turns out that that problem is solved by the LiDAR, so we can see much further out, and that generates what's known as a point cloud. And that point cloud is just little dots that you and I can clearly see in the monitor as people, but we actually have to train the robot to say that's a person versus a tree versus something I don't want to run into. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that data from the LiDAR, fuse it with the visual imagery, and build something that's known as a cost map. In this case, red is bad, you don't want to go there, and gray is good. And so once you have that information, you can then figure out based on what your, how your vehicle is oriented and how it moves, how I can actually maneuver in that space. So what kind of application is the Army making of these technologies so far? Okay, so what we're looking for, um, this is part of our advanced autonomy kits that we're working on. It's part of our robotic technology kernel. So if you can think about if I had the ability to do uh, supply in an austere environment. Okay, so let's say I want to haul soldier stuff. Right, so it would be great if I could have a soldier walking out in front of a platform while the platform is hauling all those goods, particularly in sort of small uh, terrain ever efforts. And so carrying really heavy stuff. And re carrying really heavy stuff, class four barrier material like they did in Afghanistan when we field tested some of this technology uh, as well. Or, for example, if I just want to do multiple turns, I can have the robot memorize the course it took so it can go back and forth, back and forth using this data. That's, okay. So that's sort of, uh, sort of there and back. The other area that you might want to use this is totally self-driving for recon. If you want to have a point vehicle out there in front. Something that can blow up instead of a soldier. Instead of a soldier. So the idea is you would trip the platform, retain the crew. And so for particularly for scouts or things along those lines, it would be great if those folks were out front. And how far is the Army from actually deploying something like this? Okay, so for the squad multi-purpose equipment transports. This is this thing to haul soldier gear that needs just a little bit of autonomy so that I can follow a soldier, go back and forth. We're actually within five to 10 years of actually fielding something. Okay. Uh, the other pieces that we're working on are what are known as leader follower technology. That's for convoys where I have a driver up front and then the other vehicles stay behind a certain stagger. stagger rent. I would say that's probably within a decade or closer. Uh, that technology, uh, which is interesting, is I can be, you know, I can be like, hey, Robot, you drive, you can drive the fuel, you can drive the bullets, I'll take the water. But it allows humans to do the good things because right now full autonomy, we're not right there. Right. So they can actually be at the lead. You'd have gun trucks out front for security, obviously, and gun trucks in the rear. But now I can actually reduce the sort of soldier exposure to IEDs. So Tesla's pretty much <clears throat> deploying stuff like this. Google is too. But the Army, another five to 10 years. Is well, that unfair? That's not unfair. Okay, so the way I like to explain it is, they have the benefit of what's known as a structured environment. So, you know, San Francisco may not be changing too much. Downtown Pittsburgh probably isn't changing too much other than the dynamic obstacles you've shown that you can track in here. Right. So I can actually map that out. I have good GPS coverage, and I actually have the ability to go through the cloud network and call back, call back in case I run into challenges. So the Army kind of works in ill-defined, unstructured, usually places we don't live. There aren't lots of stop lights or stop signs. Stop signs, right. and there's also usually bad people shooting back at you. Right. So you have to be concerned about in terms of security uh, um, operations. So, and it has to operate over the full range of military operations, which is why we're trying to say, let's put autonomy in appropriate places right now. Okay. So a, a good place, for example, line hall convoys. That's a good place. We do a lot of those. Usually they're in relatively secure environments, and we do them on main supply routes. So it's a well-structured, well-defined environment. All right. So, that, so that's we are working towards it, and we eventually want to get to autonomous convoy operations, which are not 
purely autonomous and they don't have all the people out because you still need security. You don't put your treasure on the road without actually having security with it. Okay, and uh, so, but that enables you to kind of reduce that. And that's sort of that sort of 15 sort of year, 15, 15 year plan. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.